Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Community Connections with Jen Villar and Bridget Willard. Hey, Jen, can you tell us, everybody, about the guest today? Absolutely. Today, we're going to be interviewing Kathy Druin, who has been a WordCamp Atlanta organizer since 2010 and most recently was the organizer for 2016 and 17, and she's still on the organizing committee. So she definitely knows about community and WordCamps and WordPress, and we're so excited to have her on the show. Her company is called Delta Primed named after her granddaughter, which is super cute. Um, and she can tell you more about that. But anyway, meet Kathy. Hi, everybody. So today we have Kathy on the show because um, she has really been instrumental in bringing people kind of out and not uh, in, and getting them involved in the community. And one of the people that she reached out to and actually had uh, asked to be a keynote is Bridget Willard. No, I wasn't a keynote. You weren't? You were a speaker? I was a was speaker. That, was that the first place you spoke, though? No, the first place I spoke was Cincinnati. Okay, she. so Bridget did her first <laughs> speaking. Sorry, I had the story wrong in my head. Yeah. Um, Bridget spoke in Cincinnati at WordCamp Cincinnati, and Kathy was there and heard her and said, will you please come to our camp and share your story? And so... Um, you know, what kind of confidence builder is that? Your first time speaking to have someone reach out and say, we need you at our camp. Yeah. yeah, Beautiful. It makes a big difference because, you know, we're talking about how to help, how to get underrepresented groups um, like Jill Binder's um, diversity outreach, right? Okay. Okay. Sometimes we say no to ourselves and we don't apply because we think, oh, nobody wants to hear anything I have to say. Right. I think, right. I think as women, we underestimate ourselves a lot. Yes. And so, Kathy, uh -huh. one, thank you. Now we can't get Bridget to be quiet, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so thank you for, for noticing that she had a story that needed to be told and for bringing that to your area so that she could influence other people and continue to grow in this space because right. she's done amazing things for, for women, for everyone in WordPress and uh, just helped really to build the community. So it all started, it started with her, but you helped to amplify that. And so mm -hmm. you're welcome. So I was wondering, you know, have you done that to other people at other camps? Or oh my God. <laughs> I am a people person from the inside out and always have been. So it comes quite naturally to me to to notice the people that are hanging back for whatever reason. It's um, it's in my nature to just start conversations and make eye contact and find out your whole life story within about two minutes. <laughs> and, <laughs> Go. Yeah. And one of my gifts is that not only do I remember your name, I also know your backstory. I mean, I just, I just know those things. And in Atlanta, I'm known for that skill set because in any kind of conversation, whether it's meetup or word camp, somebody will say, blah, blah, blah. Do we know him? And they all look to me. <laughs> and basically, it's if Kathy doesn't know who you are, then you're really not in the community. So to answer your question, that's a long answer to the question, have I reached out to any, I reach out to people all the time right. and because I think it's important that, that not only do we give lip service to the fact that meetups and word camps are inclusive, I think we have to model that. Right. Um, and 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 thankfully that is something that comes naturally to me and I take it for granted too often until I am in conversation with somebody who says, much like you were saying earlier, oh my gosh, if it hadn't been for you, you know, I would never have done this or done that or those kinds of things. So I've done that my whole life. So I have a Beautiful. question. That bring, I know I'm, mostly it's Jen, but I know that you're in the South. Are you from the South? And did the Southern hospitality culture just make uh, it easier to bring that into WordPress? It, it, it might be. I'm not real sure. Um, but t t I do know where I'm from, though. I grew up um, in the panhandle of Florida. I grew up in Pensacola, Florida. 
And so I have always lived in the South, but Florida is not really the South in the same way that Atlanta is in the South. Um, so I, th I think a piece of that does come into play that the way of life here is a little bit slower, um, a little more inviting maybe, but I'm one of those people, I could be walking through an airport that I've never been into in my entire life and I will be the person that somebody comes up and says, do you know where the restrooms are? Um, I, there's something about me that is approachable that I think is over and above the, the Southern hospitality. Well, and it could be just your hair. You show up in a room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've learned to turn off that face sometimes in airports that's like, don't ask me. But the thing is, is I always know the answer. Um, I, I do know where the restrooms are. And if I'm in Walmart and somebody says, do you know where such and such is? I do know because I am an observer. Mm -hmm. I take notice. Yes, exactly. Well, and uh, Bridget was telling us a funny story about your airport. Bridget, you want to recap that a little? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So people like I Last year was the year Bridget learned how to travel, for those of you <laughs> who remember 2017 and Bridget. So I, had, you know, I'm not a fan of LAX and LAX is kind of overwhelming. Well, I get to, I fly to work in Atlanta by myself. It's like the first, one of the first camps I fly to by myself without Jason Knill mm -hmm. or anybody from Give. And right. I get... I'm like, okay, all I have to do is this. Then it's the same as every other airport. And I get my baggage. I'm like, okay, I have my baggage. Now I have to get the lift. <laughs> and it says to go at this door. And I'm like, I don't see any labels on any doors. <laughs> and I'm over with all the limo drivers. And this one guy goes, honey, you look lost. And I go, I no. don't know where to get the lift. Like I should know. <laughs> now I know it's like, well, it's always at departures, you know, yeah. but I didn't know anything. And the, uh, the, it, okay. And Atlanta is a huge <laughs> airport hub. Okay. That airport makes LAX look like it's some podunk, um, <laughs> I was so overwhelmed. But then when I got to Atlanta, when I got there and everybody was texting me like, did you make it? Are you okay? And then I was there for contributor day. And who do I see first? Kathy. And I felt right. immediately at home. Like I'd known you because we've been talking on Twitter. Yeah. And, and I, I knew exactly who you were. You and know, it's because so. of that, that I want to go to Atlanta this year. Yeah, well, so we can make that happen. We we <laughs> applied to speak, and we are saving money. But I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, I want to experience that again because even though the camp is huge and it's very, it's you know, it's like 650 people, right. you somehow make it feel welcoming. How do you scale that? You know, it's easy for a camp with 100 or 250 people right. to feel. Uh, intimate. How I've, you, I've been to smaller camps where I did not have that sense of being welcome and invited. I, I think to answer your question is it's been modeled for a long, long time. And, and I am a driving force behind that. I know people, um, e even before I became lead organizer, I was in charge of registration and I don't forget names. And so people would be in line and I would recognize them and I would pull out their card, you know, their badge and, and hand it to them before they even came up and said, Joe Blow, right? Um, it's like, I know everybody's name and I make everybody feel welcome. And because I remember everybody, they don't have to they don't feel as if they have to start over with their story. So in terms of, of scaling it, I think we practice one person at a time. You know, if you notice somebody who is kind of outside the, the circle of conversation, widen that circle and say, you know, and, and literally turn and invite them into the conversation. People don't, hang outside a circle of people just to eavesdrop. They want to be included. Uh, and so we have to be mindful of that. Make eye contact. 
if nothing else, a smile, a, you know, eye contact and a smile goes a long way um, to, to opening a conversation. I completely agree. And what you said about people mm -hmm. don't stand nearby to eavesdrop. They just want to be a part. Right. So true. But I think sometimes we're like, oh, someone's listening to our conversation, you know, like just innately where it's like back when we're teenagers and our parents are in the room, you know, and um, and I think it's important to remind ourselves that, no, that's not what's happening. That person, they're not going to learn anything that they're going to apply and steal your business. Like, that's not what's going on. Right. They right. just want to have some friends. They just want to get to know new people and and feel a part when you're at a word camp. That's what it's all about. Right. And there's so many people who attend WordCamp for the first time by themselves uh, because they're, they are a user of WordPress and they don't know anybody. So they're coming to be educated and are already walking through the door frightened. Right. And uh, feeling quite anxious. And I think if you just even know that about somebody who's walking through the door, then it enables us to be a little more caring when we say hello and be a little bit more mindful of, um, like somebody said to you in the airport, you look lost. And it's because they acknowledged you and saw what was happening and reached out to make that anxiety a little less. Um, and I, th I think, I think too, when we talk about meetups and word camps, there are so many people who are naturally introverted that it's hard for them to make eye contact because that makes them socially anxious. Mm -hmm. um, but we just got to get over that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and just speak to one person, make eye contact with one person, and it can change their entire day. Right. So the, the intro uh, verted person is naturally attracted to technical fields, you know, coders, writers. I, uh, I think so. And, and that's being very stereotypical of me. But when I when I look at my closest circle of friends, the ones who say I'm really not comfortable with people are more developer oriented and are comfortable behind the computer all day. Right. Yeah. But. Well, and, and the other part of that is a lot of us are remote workers. So we're right. used to being by ourselves. Right. So we're isolated. Like going going to to the yeah, that was the talk I gave Atlanta about right. not self-isolating. But, but it's true. How many of us decide to be in tech because we're introverted? Because we're introverted, we're meticulous. Because we're introverted, we think things out. We go through the strategy we can concentrate on one thing at a time. We are fine working by ourselves. Yeah. Those are all assets. Except you're lonely as hell. Except for the lonely as hell part. Yeah. That's what means. That's why community matters so much. In general. Yeah. 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 So like I'm interested in how uh, how does the Atlanta community help that happen at all of your different meetups. You don't just have one meetup. You have so many meetups. Oh, we, we do have a lot of meetups, um, but there is a core of that community. Uh, when I was lead organizer, I think we had like 12 organizers on the team. And the majority of those people also facilitate a meetup group. Oh, so the organizers are meetup yeah, so you, so you already have a group of people who know each other well, who start a meetup in another part of town, and we go to those meetups and support each other. And I attend almost all of the local meetups. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and I take that skill set with me, and I'm talking to, to Jen, and Bridget walks by, and I say, Jen, have you met Bridget? Mm -hmm. And no, you haven't. And I introduce the two of you and then I go away. And then I go to somebody else and I'm chatting and somebody else walks by and I, oh, Daryl, have you met Diana? No, they haven't. So I am a matchmaker. Right. And, and so that personality 
my personality has helped develop the meetup culture here locally that we are going to be warm and inviting, right. you know, <coughs> no matter what that takes. Um, and, and like I said, my friends know that I remember names and, and one of the, the meetup facilitators here has watched me over the years. <laughs> and he, so he's watching my skills and he said, Kathy has a way of repeating your name throughout the entire meetup. And part of that is reinforcing it for me. But more importantly, I keep calling somebody by name because I want the other people in the room to know them by name. Well, well there's, there's a, a element. There's oh, what? Oh, are you going to say it, Bridget? Yeah. Well, okay. So, you know, the famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. So your name is your identity. And that's the most important word to you. Right. So when you use somebody's name, it shows that you care. And I started having trouble remembering people at the Women Who WP because it came became so big. Right. I literally have a notebook in my room in my purse and I get it right. out and I draw a seating chart. And then when everybody goes around the U-shaped table and say their name, I write it down. Yeah. Because I'm having a really hard time remembering everybody's names now. Well, like, that's my trick. But saying it over and over helps. Too. Yeah, it does help. I mean, part of that, I mean, I've always had that gift, which means that I also remember introducing myself 17 times to somebody. <laughs> you know, when somebody will come up and say, not so much now in, in the community because I'm so well known. But, you know, say go to a networking event and somebody will walk up and say, oh, I'm so-and-so. I don't think we've met. And yet, because I can remember, I can go, I met you here and I met you here and I met you here. And it pisses me off that you can't remember my name. You know, I know every conversation we've ever had. And, and I used to internalize that. But now I don't because I've lived a long time and I don't care. Yeah. But um, I think that's also why it's important to me to make people feel welcome. I mean, it, it, if I don't model it and teach it, who is going to? Mm. Perfect. That's a great way to live your life. That's getting tweeted right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's, no, it's true. It, it needs to be tweeted. I second that. You can retweet <laughs> it for me too. So... <laughs> But that's um, the thing is because in the WordPress community, we want that ebb and flow of leadership. So if we yeah. don't mentor. Right. Then what's going to happen? Well, and beyond the WordPress community, right. Kathy, I can't imagine that you're not like this in every aspect of your life. I am. I mean, I'm buying groceries and I'm, people are telling me their life story. You know, I, um, Partially because I, I make eye contact with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you can be intentional about that. When you go through the drive through at Starbucks, do you make eye contact with the person that's serving you? Most of us do not. But she does. Um, she wants the good hot chocolate. They all know her. They, they, call, they used to call me the Lexus lady. And now <laughs> they, they always... Are, uh, they're so they're so cute. They love me. They give me free drinks all the time too, and I can't really say no to that. I have the bartender it's version so of that. To pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always I ask the bartender's friend. name. Always know yeah. your bartender's name. right. You know, but you have to care, right? Yeah. You know? And so it's not like I, um, you know, I have a friend who who tries to memorize my skill set. But it's one, it's a gift, and two, I care. I, w I want to know who you are. Right. Um, it's, you know, I was a therapist in my first life. Oh, oh. And people who become therapists are trying to fix their wounded family. Uh, I've never met a therapist who did not come from a wounded family. Mm -hmm. Why else would you go into that field? But so that's always been my skill set. I mean, it's my gift from growing up in a crazy ass family <laughs> and having to, you know, read the environment and, and get a feel for what's oh going to happen in a minute and 
all that kind of craziness. I love you so much. I <laughs> love you more now than I did. No, but it's, it's a skill that comes in handy. And I really do want to know. And, and when I, when I talk about community at, you know, in the WordPress community functions, I can tell stories about, I remember meeting Trish when she sat in the back of this talk and she was over there and blah, 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 blah. And, and I've watched her grow over the last five years to, to be so full of herself and vitality and honoring her dreams. I treasure being a piece of that. It's, um, it's my gift to the world, I guess, is to make people feel comfortable. That's amazing. Okay. So mm -hmm. with you being such a giver, because we yeah. all know that you are, how do you recharge yourself? What do you do to make sure that you're not giving too much of yourself and burning yourself out? Well, there are lots of days that I don't go home. I mean, go outside <laughs> of home. Um, it, it, I do get charged up by the conversations that I have with people. But I also enjoy those days where I come home and sit behind the computer and do something very task oriented uh, and turn off all that people stuff. Because after a while, people get tiresome. <laughs> like yeah. fish and house well, more so than others and and you know but um it it takes a lot of energy to be on all the time so i i work from home and i follow my own little internal clock i get my hair done i get my nails done if i want to you know watch crown a whole season in one weekend i do that too um <laughs> I read, I do crossword puzzles. No, and that Prince you know. Philip, man, I can't believe she's still married to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any pets? Do I? You have pets? No, uh -uh. I don't like taking care of anybody except <laughs> me. <laughs> Unless you're at a WordPress it. event. Well, well I, can, I like, make sure I like caring for people. <laughs> I don't like taking care of, of people. It. Yeah, got it. For not of. This is yeah, a good big, English big language. Big difference. <laughs> um, it's just so, like you know yeah. if you, if somebody just took that part. And next up on community connections, Kathy <laughs> says people can be really tiresome. I don't want to care <laughs> take care of anybody. <laughs> Come to work camp Atlanta. <laughs> I contacts, contacts. That's it. You can't run for office now, Kathy. Oh, just really? Yeah. Well, that works anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but I I do care about the people. I mean, it's just it was what, just funny what, the way you said it. Um, I mean, I can be in another word camp somewhere out of state and, and bump in, especially sponsors, because you you tend to see them over you know repeatedly, and and so. I don't ask them about work. I want to know how their kids are. Yeah. And the fact that I remember that they have two boys or three girls or two of each or I, I think that's important. It absolutely is. But I don't want them, you know, tweeting me after hours about their family. <laughs> you know? Right. You know, um, I'm not a caretaker anymore. I'm basically a concerned citizen <laughs> i've lived long enough that i truly am a matriarch in so many settings you know mm -hmm. um, it always catches me off guard when i'm reminded that i am older than most people's parents that are my colleagues you know and i'm going oh my god not only am i older than their parents i could be the grandparent of some of them <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I've lived a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you've lived a long time. You have a lot of wisdom to impart. You said that you travel to far away word camps. What's the farthest you've been? Uh, I went to Boston. And so that was probably Boston and Philadelphia were probably my two furthest points. Okay. So really I tend cool. to get a little closer to home, um, sometimes where I can drive. Mm -hmm. Fly. Yeah. Okay. 
And what did you think? Were they a lot different from your home camp? Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that surprises me when I travel to other word camps, especially if it's a larger metropolitan area, there is only one meetup, for example, and that I was aware of in Boston. I'm going, how can it just be one meetup in Boston? Right. Where I live in a bedroom community called Marietta, and we have four meetups a month. Every single week you can go to a meetup in Marietta. Wow. And then I can go drive 10 miles another direction. You know, 10 miles drive in Atlanta is a 40-minute trip. Right. But, and I go there and, you know, so just in this small little radius around Marietta, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight meetups. And that's just in a small, small geographic area. And then when you broaden it to Metro Atlanta, we, we have probably 10 or 11 or more. So when I travel and I'm meeting people and I ask, you know, what meetup group do they go to? They say, well, we only have one. Yeah, San Diego's like that too. But San Diego's huge. Right. And their camp's huge. Yeah. Maybe. I know. Like, so what, what kind of advice do you have? Do people ask you for meetup advice, like for starting to yeah. for growing a community mm -hmm. like that? Like I'll, how do you out? Um, they find me because, um, no, I mean, what advice do you give them about what, outreaching to grow that? Um, One meetup to, Well, and if you have 10 meetups in Atlanta, we need to have a women who WP there. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm hesitating only because I'm trying to go back and think how it happened that we grew. Um, because because it, we started meetups here in 2010, I okay. think. Maybe, maybe 2008. Um, and there was only one for the longest time until I would go to word camps and discovered that everybody I met lived in the suburbs, whereas our camp was like in town. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, well, if everybody I'm meeting lives out in the suburbs, we should have one in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So I started a meetup, a second meetup in 2011. And then somebody else looked at that and said, oh, well, that seems to be working. And so they kind of, grew naturally so it's not so much that i give advice to the areas that have just one meetup and say well you can grow it by this that and the other because one of the reasons i believe that it's not growing internally is maybe permission is not being given that it's okay um I mean, I rocked the boat when, when I decided to launch a second group outside. Um, in Atlanta, there's this big circle called 285 that goes around the city. So you either live inside the perimeter or outside the okay. perimeter. So I live outside the perimeter, and, and it was felt that, that my action was going to be very divisive Oh, the community. Um. And that wasn't true at all. It's nobody wants to drive an hour and a half to go to a meetup. I do. Every I, know, time. I know you do, but you but do. Yeah. If there was one at Dana Point, answer. you know, I totally yeah. would do it. But like you, Dana Point is within 40 miles of Orange County's meetup. So I can't be an official meetup. They have well, a 40 mile rule. The now, they do. now they do. Now they do. Now they do. But I'm saying do. now they do. So like, but like that's a problem that they have in LA, because there's Pasadena. There's any time you're driving around here, you have trouble, you know. But like, it, I do that. But yeah, if there was one closer in San Clemente or Michigan, uh, I, I would be going there. I there would. There's a little more geographic flexibility than you are assuming in the metro areas. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because. That's good to know. 
I can drive from my house to where we have the Marietta meetup is 10 miles going, you know, northwest. I can go northeast and travel like 12 miles. And that's an, that's an, a chapter meetup there. I can go north. Well, in five miles, there's a chapter meetup there too. So in the metropolitan areas, because because it, the it's not the geographic distance as it's much as it is. It's the time. It takes me 45 minutes to go to that meeting in Alpharetta, which is 12 miles from me. Right. You know, so there's a little more leeway with that. That's good to and, know. And so you begin to recognize that there is a need. Um, the other piece of that is even if there's not a chapter um, and we're doing this with, there's two of us that, that organize a meetup group in Marietta. And because I was the organizer and made, anyway, I got in first to the chapter. Now, you know, we meet in the same building just on different days of the month. So that's way too close. You know, we're in each, so, but, but Mickey announces his meetups underneath my meetup, for example. Does that make sense? Yeah, we do that. Yeah. We and announce so, all the meetups from San Diego to LA. Right. You know, and, and so they get published, but you could pick a location that's closer to Dana Point. Because I know, like, in, right in Dana Point, there's at least three of us that live in Dana Point, plus a couple in San Clemente, plus one in Mission Viejo that would come. Like, yeah. I could easily have, just with the people I know right now. You're talking right. anarchy right now. No, just I'm anarchy. not. I, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that's a real thing. And somebody asked us, it started. I can't start it. I, I am a volunteer out. Right. Like, I would go, you know. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to just. I, no, 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 no. Like, I mean, These are fascinating to me because in so many ways, communities like sourdough, right? You have to have that starter. There has to be a starter. And then you, you keep and, that starter and you keep putting it out, right? So that's how you keep yeah. making batches. But this one starter is always together and you just keep right. part of it out so that there's always this ability to reproduce. So, right. um, like and how are we be, I think it has to be encouraged um, there there's a, a a community that's geographically distanced from us I mean they would not be considered part of the metro Atlanta area but um, this this woman attended my meetup once and then I ran into her at WordCamp US and in fact our community had a meetup at US and there were like, you know, 30 or 40 of us in one of the hotel lounge areas. And I kept looking around going, who is that woman over there? And anyway, long story short, um, we figured out her name and she left U.S. F having filled out an application to start a meetup wow. in her area. And she says she had the motivation and encouragement to do that. Because she had met me, seen my meetup, and I kept saying, you need to start one. And if I can help you, let me know. Yeah. All she needed yeah. was the encouragement. And so her, her first meetup was Thursday of last week. Oh, it seems like a lot longer than that. Um, and she invited me to, to come speak to their first group. And... She, she's already outgrown the room she had reserved awesome. because there was that many people who who wanted to attend something close to home. And that, that's what it comes down to is kind of identifying the need and making it available. Even just to say, you know, all we have to do is meet for coffee. Right. And, and then it grows from that. I wonder how many people, Jen, aren't starting meetups just because of that. Because of lack of that, that lack of encouragement to just to just start it. it, try it. Probably depends on the area too, because we've talked right. to people all over the country. You know, on this show, yeah. we try to, uh, and other countries too, we try to pull people in 
and just talk about <laughs> what it's like in their community. What What is WordPress in your community? Right. And um, we've had people that don't have the same resources and don't feel like they're alone. And uh, <laughs> the problem is you've got 20 people feeling like they're alone. Yes. But they're not. They just don't know about each other yet. Right. And so especially with the meetups being announced in the dashboard, if uh -huh. somebody just has the courage to say, I have three people I can call on the phone and say, let's go to this coffee shop, like you're saying, right. and, and start a meetup, who knows what will happen? Because it start, it, if they apply and they start and it gets in that mm -hmm. dashboard, I know with Women in WP in Orange County, we have had so many new people come just because they're seeing it there. So right. We're, ha we're having that experience too, yeah. which is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing for, because for the longest time, um, I mean, when I, I'm coaching people about using WordPress and they log in for the longest time, I would say, just close that welcome window. It doesn't say anything to anybody for anything, <laughs> you know? So it took me a little bit longer to figure out that that's where news was happening. Because you're never going to come here to read the WordPress blog. So just turn that off. <laughs> but, um, because it now says, look, this is what's happening near you. More and more people are finding it. One of the things that I've experienced, not just here in Atlanta, but when I go to other camps, there are people who are, who are involved in meetups who have no idea that there's such a thing called word camp even when they're in the same geographic area. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who come to camps who never know that there's a meetup, which I just find amusing. That was me, though. My, my, my first word camp was in yeah. 2010. And I was like, my, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what word camp was. It's like, my other friends said, just go. It's $40. Who cares? Right. And then I'm like, there's a meetup, but then it was at seven o'clock in Huntington Beach. It was too far away to go after work, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I mean, it now was. But then when I started working for a plug-in shop, I'm like, well, I guess I better make time for this. And then yeah. all of a sudden they became my friends, friend, friend, friends, you know. Right. And then women who WP, blah, 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 blah. Here we are talking to you, beautiful face. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I do think it takes... Um, I believe in co-organizing a lot of things. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think it takes different personalities to build even a small event, you know. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to fall back to being very stereotypical. A lot of times meetups get started by developers, and they're very comfortable attracting a couple of other coders and they sit around and they talk code and one day a user walks in and they don't know how to make that user feel comfortable right. um, one is because of their own um, sometimes their own social awkwardness or anxiety and I, I can't tell you how many people I have coached as beginners that have said to me, I tried going to this particular meetup, but they were talking over my head. Um, and sometimes it's hard for the, the, the amazingly brilliant coders um, to remember what it was like to be brand, brand, brand new. Yeah. You know, because a lot of those people were coding in the basement when they were 12. Right. But um, so I think it takes somebody who's got a personality much like mine who is going to see the people. And then it takes another set of people who know how to provide topics of interest that are um, that will attract all different types of of people. Like if I think about our Marietta group, for example, there is one meetup that is really focused on developer topics, but that grew out of the tight community that we already had. Right. You know, and then there's a brand new one that is going to be targeted to like business owners, you know, not just those they, of us who are in the 
business, but business owners. Right. right. That's, we have the same we thing have. in Orange County. We have general meetup, which is all question yep. and answers. So whatever you bring as a question, that's how we do the meetup. Then right. there's design developer business and women who WP. And that's how Jen started women who WP is with me and Elizabeth, because we had a developer, a marketer and an agency owner. Right. We had mm -hmm. the personalities and the people who could answer questions that were different. Right. Yes. And so, I mean, well, Jen is a marketer and a coder too, but you know, like not mm -hmm. everybody can be a unicorn. So, Right. But we have a rule too. Uh -huh. We don't I'm a writer. To each what other. are you talking about? Well, you're a writer too. Like she, oh, Jen, Jen does everything. <laughs> so, but we don't sit together at the meetups. Right. right. When when we are hosting the meetup. Well, and so, and there's another logistical thing here about having three people or multiple people is not everybody can make it every month, but those meetups right. have got to be consistent to keep your audience coming back and to keep right. your, you know, to grow your meetup. Right. Always so, the third Wednesday. Always, 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 always. Yeah. And can yeah. I just Even say if something really quick? Up for it, you've got to show up for it. Right. right. And so like there was a time where I just got back from Europe and Jen and Elizabeth was still there, but I did mm -hmm. it. And we recruited two other women uh, who also have that welcoming spirit, Kathy. And I said, look, mm -hmm. I need you to be the unofficial Breed. official breeders. That right. look for these people and go and sit next to them. So, but here's the other thing. Um, it's hard work, right? Yes, it is. So to have it all on one person also doesn't give it room for growth, you know? So I think that some people think that they just open up their office space and tell people to come in. That's not the same as like, we looked at the meetup. Uh -huh. uh, we, I looked at the faces and I greeted them and I recognized them. I said, Oh, Hey, how you doing? Da, da, da. And then like when they wrote in the meetup that they couldn't come, we wrote back to them. Oh, we're sorry. We'll see you next time. Right. You know, we interact with them even on the meetup page so that when they're, yeah. Somebody asked us, well, what's your retention? We're like, 90%. They go, what? Like, well, we care about the people, and that goes through in our behavior. So I right. So I think that some of that, of what you're saying, Kathy, is, is so important. We've experienced it, but to us, it was just normal, right? Right. We didn't think that, oh, you know, I, we're just looking for that lost person. And honestly, I've run the meetup without Jen there. It's better when Jen's there. Okay. Yeah. Aww, like there, well, it just is like, I don't, I'm not her and she's not me, but I do right. the things that she can't do and vice versa. Right. So I set up all the stuff and she blah, blahs with everybody. But if somebody really needs a one-on-one, -on -one, that's me. Right. I'll right. well, have different roles. And, and there was one meetup that we had where Bridget didn't come. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the week we went to vision boards and we had glitter out. We were doing all kinds of stuff. She would never have condoned it. Everyone had a blast, but not having Bridget there, like we felt her presence not in the room. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how can you not, right? But, but the funny thing about that, I want you to tell that story, but first I want to talk about the holidays. Okay. <laughs> so we have ours every single time, every third Wednesday, and a third Wednesday is really close to Christmas. Right. We still do it. And this is my encouragement to other people. I know that it's a hard time to to patch it in but this is what i said to convince jen that we should the holidays are the hardest time of the year mm -hmm. and the loneliest people are the most lonely right if there is any time that wordpress community needs you it's during the holidays and i will stop with my soapbox right there but jen <laughs> you have to tell about the vision board because <laughs> kathy will love this story okay, okay. <laughs> you have All it right. so good so I told Bridget, I said, it's the January meetup. You're not going to be there. What are we going to do? We should get a speaker or I can talk about goals and, you know, setting a vision for the new year. And I said, we can even do vision boards. She's like, uh, we're not doing vision boards. And I said, Bridget, it'll be so fun. And I'll get stickers and we'll have, you know, this and that. And I just started going off and, and she's like, okay, do what you want. And Elizabeth's like, yeah, let's do vision boards. And so I went out and bought a, a whole bunch of supplies. Right. And we had a blast creating these vision boards. Well, 
So in the meantime, tell her your vision board. I will. I will. So this was before, I don't know if you know that in June of 2017, I spoke at WordCamp Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was before that I had filled out an application. I think back, I, I'm thinking I, it was like October or November that I filled out that application. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, we had had some things go on in my family and my husband and I had decided I wasn't going to go uh, to, to WordCamp Europe. And I hadn't heard back, so I figured, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to go. So in my head, I had convinced myself I wasn't going. But Elizabeth really wanted to go. It was her dream to go to Paris. And so uh -huh. I had bought these stickers that had, like, the Eiffel Tower, you know, different things. And so I didn't want to tell her I wasn't going because I didn't want to, like, rain right. on her parade. <laughs> so I went ahead. I put a, a Eiffel Tower took up half of my vision board. And then there was like a WordPress window, like a, a, um, a cruise ship, you know, the circle board yeah. thing with a W in the middle of it and um, growth and love and like all this stuff. Right. And um, and it turned out to look pretty cool. And so uh, I took a picture of it and sent it to Bridget. You know, she's like, oh, <laughs> you know, all of us took pictures and. And, but I didn't think anything more of it. I put it in my office on my desk and, you know, every once in a while I, I or like off on a shelf and I, every once in a while I'd look at it and everything. So um, I think it was in March. Uh, I was just, I hadn't even thought really about WordCamp Europe anymore. Like it was <laughs> not in my head. And I get this email and it says, we'd like you to speak. And I just started bawling. Like she called crying. me crying. I thought somebody died. Yeah. Because I was like, <laughs> how am I going to make this work? I agreed not to go. But now yeah, right. I have to because I applied. They accepted. Yeah. And I can't say no. They, they like, never asked me back. So and every time you. they say, we don't know how a speaker, she goes, we could do vision boards. Remember, we can't be up. <laughs> yeah, but so, so then I, you know, took a look, a deeper look at that vision board. And I'm like, it happened. Like, and now it's hanging board. on your office wall. Yeah, now yeah. I hang on my office wall because it reminds me that your subconscious can do amazing things, no. even to people in other countries. So, right. so. So not to make the show about us, but since we're all just chatting for a second. <laughs> so I, she wants me to go to Belgrade, Serbia for Word Camp Europe this year. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, okay. So, so I, did you do a vision board? No, but I went got a part-time job at a travel agency. And guess where the, my boss is from? Serbia. Yeah. And uh, guess where the other ladies from? Slovenia. And guess where their other offices? Belgrade. <laughs> and guess who's learning Serbian? Ciao. <laughs> Kako si. Dobro. I, I read it somewhere that says, ask and believe and you'll receive. Yeah, that's a good I think one. It's written somewhere. Somewhere. Wink, somewhere. wink. Nudge, nudge. But I'm just saying, like, it's funny, it's, like when you get a little bit of encouragement, yes. just a little bit, how much your dreams expand beyond any. So last, and because she did that, because she got accepted, I decided to go to Paris and that was my first yeah. international flight. So Jen being brave enough to do that was what gave me the courage to be brave too. And I think that we forget that, cur that courage is contagious. Right, I, I like that, and I feel like you—that's what Jason think... Kinnell used to tell me all the time. Courage is mm -hmm. contagious. So, like, I feel like you do that for people, Kathy, and I—I I feel like if we can tap into that magic, that yes. spirit of inclusiveness, that intentional community building, that the WordPress community is going to be better off for it. I mean, maybe you need the odd couple starting a meetup. Maybe it shouldn't be one person starting a meetup. Maybe it should be two you know that have different skill sets the introvert right. and the extrovert you know? i think i think at one level people say dep depending on who they who they are let's let's talk about somebody who's a beginning dev you know or or even they're not a beginning dev but they are a freelancer who spends most of their time in a home office they they come to meetups not because they want to learn, but it's the only place I have to go to be with like-minded peers, you know, but we, 
most of us don't say, well, I'm coming out today because I'm feeling lonesome. Nobody's <laughs> going to say that. No. Um, and, and so I think too often meetups, for example, get started with the idea of let's come together and let's talk code. But that's not what people really, really want. People really want to be connected and acknowledged and seen to be important, you know. Um, and it's okay to talk code, but it is a whole lot more meaningful to walk through the door and have one say, you know, hey, Mike, it's great to see you. You know, oh, my God, they, they remembered my name. Well, it could be because we've made it a policy, not in my meetups, but but maybe having a name tag helps. People forget they have own name tags, you know, and you can call them by name and they they still feel honored. No, I that happened to me at the bar because I said, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. He goes, it's Jake. I, he goes, I said, hey, Jake, can I have a, or whatever his name, it was Ryan. I said, can I have another tequila? He goes, sure thing, Bridget. I'm like, how'd you know my name? He goes, you gave me your credit card. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, wow, he remembered my name. Right. <laughs> like you came here, your credit card. People are always amazed when I know their names. Yeah. But they give me their credit cards every day. There's a restaurant down <laughs> in Sunset Beach that I used to go to when I was younger a lot. And it was called Captain Jack's. And their policy was they looked at their guest list before the people got there. Yeah. Higher wait staff knew who was coming in. It wasn't just the person who greeted you at the door. It was every person who would be interacting with you that night addressed you by name. And it was the most amazing experience because you felt like you were home, you know? That's what Cheers was all about, right? right. Absolutely. And, yeah. I mean, and, and everybody wants that. I mean, that is our human condition. We want to feel connected to other people. And some of us are more skilled than others in building those connections. So and what what would you what kind of advice would you give to the former Bridget? Like, oh my God, I'm supposed to go to this. I know I should go to this, but I'm super nervous and I don't really know anybody. I walk in the room and it's all my WordPress heroes. Like I was super yeah. intimidating. Like what is the advice you give to a new person? They're seeing this in the dashboard. They want to go, but mm. just just go anyway. You will be glad for the experience. <laughs> Um, even if you walk into a meetup that is not as friendly and outgoing and warm and personable as mine are, uh, <laughs> you will still walk away with something. There will be a comment that somebody makes that will give you an aha. And even those of us who have been going to meetups for eight years now, still walk away with a piece of information mm -hmm. um, that's meaningful. And for me, that's it's usually a people connection that I make. Oh, but but just go. Just just go and speak to one person. That's that's all it takes. You know, and if nothing else, speak to the organizer and they will try and make you feel welcome. But that's not always the case either. Yeah, because sometimes we're busy. Yeah. Like I'm setting up the AV stuff and. Right, right. Jen's you know. somebody else or. Well, I, I think, well, I think it's important to you to say to you, the other members of, of your meetup, your regulars, we are an inviting and warm and inclusive meet up the whole good faith things that we talk about so please at least speak to the person on your left and on your right and not look straight ahead waiting for the presentation to begin now is that something you do do you go around the room and have people introduce themselves at your meetup not not so much as i used to because um our meetups are like 30 plus people okay but Somebody will, it, it's just one of my bar tricks, invariably about, somebody will say, well, Kathy knows everybody, and somebody will say, oh, no, she doesn't, and I go one, two, and I call everybody by their first name, 
you know, but not everybody can do that. Right. But I can say to the other people in the meetup, it's important for you to acknowledge the person to your left and your right. Say hello. That's yeah. all it takes. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, thank oh. you for being such an example of that and oh. making it happen in your community and way beyond. It can. It can happen anywhere. We just have to be mindful of it. I, to be I, polite. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy that you agreed to be on our show. Oh, I'm thrilled. And um, and such great advice, really, for anybody wanting to grow their, their community, not to, like, mm -hmm. kind of grasp it, but let it naturally, the people that are passionate about it, give them permission. You right. know, talk to the person to the left, to the right, care when you're asking them about it, try to know people's names. And those kinds of things, they make a lasting impression. And then that mm -hmm. itself will grow organically. It does. So um, as we close the show, uh, Kathy, can you tell us where people can find you? Oh, my gosh. I am so easy to find. I'm everywhere. But you'll have to spell my name on all things. My username is K Druin. K-D-R-E-W-I-E-N. My website is deltaprimed.com or you can find me at atlantawpcoach.com. That's awesome. Jen, Fantastic. where can people find you? People can find me at needsomeonetoblog.com or on Twitter and LinkedIn at jenblogs 4 you the number four, the letter U. All right. And I'm Bridget Willard. You can find me on Duolingo, Learning French, and on Memorize, Learning Serbian, or at bridgetwillard.com. Thanks for joining us, guys. So fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.